Hello again, it is I, it is Chrome Magnus, back for the second day running. So, I was thinking the other night that uh, there's something I've been meaning to do for a long, long time. Uh, not just, the, you know, as opposed to Werewolf and Vampire, I've been meaning to do that too. And that thing, I really, it's a bit of a mammoth undertaking, so I, I really wanted to wait until I was feeling in good health to really get this, get the ball rolling, you know. And that thing, right here, is Exalted 2nd Edition. If you've been coming to my channel, you know I've been nodding to this like, uh, well, I don't know, my, my head could probably drop off the amount I've been nodding towards it. As, as you can see, there's a lovely pile of books here. <laughs> Uh, about 20 in total. I do have a 20. I do have uh, 21 books in total. Though one of them seems to go and walk about somewhere. I'll find that later. Um, so basically, this game is the one that so far in my role-playing career I have had the most fun with. Uh, I, you know, obviously it's been the most enjoyable for me. The one that I've been able to role-play most with. It, to be honest, I I love this setting. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Not to say there aren't problems with it, but for what I gleaned from it. You know, for for the pleasure it yielded to me, didn't matter. So you know, it's just maybe it's something that just appeals to me personally. But you know, I love this game. I will say that straight off. Exalted in a nutshell is set in a fantasy world. Uh, basically, you know, one of these fantasy worlds before time began. It is a world with very Asian, Eastern European, Oriental, Japanese influences. And you play as one of the Exalted, hence the game's namesake, who are basically the chosen of the gods themselves. And um, so yes, it's a high level power game. Some people have said it's a power game as Wet Dream. I totally disagree. But we'll get into that later. The world itself is quite interesting in that it's got a fairly unique creation myth Though, when I say unique, basically it's an amalgamation of Eastern European, Japanese, Oriental, blah blah blah. Uh, Greek has a very large influence in it as well. And, uh, you know, it, it's created quite a diverse fantasy, a fantasy setting. How does it all come about? Well, very simple. In the beginning, as in so many other uh, settings and whatnot, there was chaos. This void of this void of nothingness, I suppose, swirling with energy known as essence, the very fabric of everything. I know that's already a contradiction in terms, but roll with it. The essence in this untempered state has the potential for anything anybody can actually dream of. Though, in point of fact, uh, there really were no minds to temper it, for there were beings who existed in this um, swirl of energy and chaos. So they thrived on this. Uh, they thrived on this nature. Uh, you know, they didn't want. To, they didn't want anything to change, bar one of, bar a few. These few, actually, with the with a supreme effort of might and will, took on physical form, and these beings were known then as the primordials. Now, the other beings of, of this chaos, of this uh, swirling amalgamation of essence, took serious offence to this. This was, a, this was a blasphemy against their very natures. And the primordials and the fair folk, which is what these other beings would, uh, would uh, be known, you know, th this is what they'd be known as in the later millennia, uh, basically elven folk kind of thing. Um, in fact, very much elven folk kind of thing, but not the type of elves you'd want to meet I do apologise, some burk is sawing something outside. You're just going to have to ignore that if you can hear it. Um, the, these aren't the kind of elven folk you'd like to meet, you know, on a street, down an alley, even during the midday. <laughs> but uh, I'll get to that later. After eons of fighting, the primordials basically were exhausted. They, 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 couldn't, they couldn't be asked to go on anymore. So, instead of continuing, they decided, right, we're going to create a refuge which is going to be secure from the fair folk. And through a combined effort of wills and consciousness, they quite literally created the land of creation. Basically, by weaving these errant threads of essence together, they made something whole, something good, something physical. They secured it against the fair folk and balanced it with, well, basically, they created it from five elements. And in a very uh, n n in a very large nod to Japanese culture, these elements were fire, wind, water, 
Um, sorry, fire, air, if I want to be correct about this. Fire, air, water, earth, and wood. These were the five core elements, and to balance them, the primordials created five pillars of these elements. The pillar of air they placed to the north, and as you're looking at it, the pillar of um, wood they placed to the east. The pillar of fire they placed to the south. Water they placed to the west, and right in the centre, on this huge continent, basically maybe about as big as Northern America or even Russia, called the would become known as the Blessed Isle. On top of a mountain that was, basically, think of it, if you're thinking Mount Olympus, you're not really far wrong here. Uh, but they placed the uh, pillar of earth. And this balanced creation, and this made sure that incursions by the fair folk who would want to destroy it and return it to its natural state couldn't actually happen. They wrote the rules for creation. They populated it with the smallest blade of grass, the largest tree you know, to cats, to whatever. They, they populated themselves all with the power of their imaginations. It was an animistic world. To say that... Um, well, no, I'll get to that in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Essentially, uh, the primordials did create intelligence. So they created the mountain folk. They created the dragon kin. Um, they created humanity. Um... But the problem is that the Primordials suddenly realised that with this huge world that they created, they needed to be the ones in charge to make sure everything ran smoothly, because with magic this prolific, very small things can make the whole damn thing go wrong. So they thought to themselves, right, well, I, we don't want to do this. We can't be asked to do this. We just want our sanctuary. We just want to rest in peace. We want to have a play around, do whatever. So Primordials had this really good idea that they would create these beings called the gods. Creation is an animistic world in that there is a god of everything. A rock, to a home, to a tree, to even a concept like love and hate, and everything has a god associated with it. It's an animistic world in that sense. Um, and of course the most powerful of these gods would be the gods of the celestial bodies in the heavens, in 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 the uh, in the stratosphere, whatever. Obviously, um, the sun, the moon, and the five planets. I can't remember precisely which ones those are, but you know, we're missing a well, we're missing a couple. Um, and basically, it, they they created this thing called the celestial order. Uh, you know, it's very very Japanese in that sense. Everything has to be in order. Everything has to be balanced. And the primordials essentially made the gods, in quite a clever move, that the gods can never actually rise up and attack their creators. And the primordials themselves buggered off into a, a floating city called Yushan. Think of it as heaven. That's basically what it means. And basically they indulged themselves with what would be termed as the celestial games. Uh, in the basis possible term is sex, drugs and rock and roll with a bit of politics thrown in <laughs> just to keep them interested and uh, and the last big thing about this world is that they made it a world based around reincarnation that is to say that everyone has their place in the circle of life and if they hold you know, if they're good people, they hold true to their morals, they help others when in need, they're, when they die they'll reincarnate higher up the chain and for a time, all was good. And, well, to be perfectly frank, I'll come. it all came crashing down. And I'll come to that in the second part of, Exhaust, uh, in a, of Exalted, the background. I'll be right back. Won't be a moment. <laughs> 